What we have here is a rectangle. This is a rectangle that's, let's say, two by five inches. And on this rectangle, there is a drawing, a sketch. Now what you wanna do is, let's say you wanna make it bigger than two by five, but you wanna scale it up in, a, in the proper way. You wanna scale it up where everything is in proportion to each other, but just bigger. Now, the, the unfortunate lazy bones would say, well, I'll just add, uh, like say, two inches to the five inch side and get it seven inches, and then I'll add two more inches, <clears throat> where it's two, and make that two four. So I have seven inches by four inches. Let's get going. Now, if you, if you look carefully, you realize that this rectangle is not the same shape as this bigger rectangle. There's a problem. Um, so we still have to figure out what that is. So let's take a look at this. This is, this is for someone like me and hopefully for a bunch of others who really have a problem with doing math, you know, is to look at the visuals. So visually speaking, all you have to do is take your original rectangle this inside rectangle here, which is a two by five inch uh, shape, and you make an X. And so the, the first line goes through this corner and that corner, and the second line goes through this corner and that corner, you see? So now the, the lines move outward, and if you just take a ruler and measure seven inches and butt up against here, and you bring up a line that's gonna be 90 degrees from this mark, make that mark up like that, it'll intersect this diagonal line, you get the answer. So you have, you have this figured out, it's right here. Now what is that? It's just a little under three inches. To be precise, it's two inches and 14 sixteenths of an inch from here to here. Now, that alone would help you with sizes like this and um, still some of us want to apply math well if you want to apply math it would go something like this so let's let's make two rectangles so this is what we have and we want to, we want to scale it up to this and so our dimensions are as follows two inches and five inches and then question mark we don't know what that is yet so I would plug it in this formula. I made this a fraction and I made that a fraction like that. So what you do is you divide five into two. And that should give you Point four. Now you take that and you multiply it by this number, which is this side of this bigger rectangle. Now we know we want that side to be. And you get 2.8. And that's your answer for, for that side right there. Now when you convert 0.8, you get something like 14, 16. So your answer is 2 inches and 14 sixteenths of an inch. Pretty good, right? You follow me so far? So, how does this bring us closer to home? What we want to do is draw a, a still life composition. Here is our still life composition choices, and we're going to choose this one right here. Now notice, first off, that it's the same size as this. So this is not random in size. And what do I mean by that? Take a look at this. This is our 9 centimeter by 12 centimeter, by the way. Now follow, 
follow these lines to the extreme corners here and here. They meet up at the corner of this uh, paper. Now look at this here and here. Same thing, meet, meet up at the corner of the paper. Now this paper is 18 by 24. Now 18 by 24 is a standard size. So that means that our viewfinder corresponds to a fixed standard size. So we had talked about how standard size is connected to the golden rectangle, which is connected to the golden ratio, and which is connected to the Fibonacci number. So you see how this corresponds with the standard size of 18 by 24 sheet of paper. Now, what we want to do is determine the size of our paper that we're going to draw our still life composition. The still life composition that we want to draw would be this one. So I wanted a vertical or a uh, portrait format support for my drawing. And so I prepared this. And notice how it has a deckled edge. I kind of like the aesthetic quality of that. I think it's fine. Uh, let's see. Now before, we, now before we start drawing, let's take a look at this. Now this ain't a random size drawing surface either. For instance, if we take our viewfinder and superimpose it to this paper, and I want you to see this. Take a look at what happens. Granted that there is a little bit of an angle because of my camera position, I assure you that this is the same rectangle but bigger. How did I do that? I'm either a genius or I'm just sticking to uh, the standard size concept. And so let's take a look at this. I have this big piece of paper, 18 by 24, and I made an X. And you see that? The lines meet at the corner of the paper like that and each each side each corner of the paper now what I did was I, I had taken a sheet from this 18 by 24 and I took the short end of that paper which was 18 inches and I just put up against here like this see that like that and like that and I just came over here and well it's a little bit well you know human error right but I, I basically got approximately uh, <laughs> What, 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 what was I saying? I got it, um, my approximations are exact. <laughs> and so approximately, uh, in an exact sense, you can see how I was able to figure out where to cut off the bottom part of the paper. And that's what we did. And, and so it turns out to be the same, the same as this one, but only bigger. So that means that if I were to blow up like say your your dogs playing cards and I blew that up it would fit here perfectly like that and so that means that my composition here if I blow it up it will fill in here perfectly without any distortion of the of the say the negative this is negative space here this background here that shape is is intact if I blow it up in here. I can literally blow this shape up a few times to fit in here nice and snug without any any problems. Same with everything else that makes up this composition. Because what we're looking at, folks, is a collection of shapes that make up this composition. So this is where we're at. We have our chosen composition. And what I did was I used white charcoal pencil to show the nine squares. Can you see it? And I recommend to try to use your, your sighting techniques. Like, so I'm figuring out how to divide the width of the paper and the height of the paper into three sections. So I'm making these little marks like this. Now what I did was I held something straight like my pencil and I just kind of went like this. I recommend you just kind of go like this and just kind of check it off like that. You see how like, okay, well, and I'm going to go, like, from here to here. 
I'm just, I'm just trying to figure this out. Like, so I'm going to go like this, and you can tell that it's not accurate. You see how it's a little bit off. So that means I have to go like this. I'm going to give myself more range here. And I, and I want you to do this on purpose to pre so you practice this skill. So I got it. So here to there, approximately, it's like that. So this is not good. So you're seeing this real time, me correcting myself like that. See that? And then I go like this. That looks pretty good. And then like that, that looks pretty good. Now, without moving my thumb and index finger from the base of the pencil, I come over here and do the same thing. And look at my previous marks. That's way off, right? So, like, you gotta really get into this technique. Uh, and you probably wonder, why not just use a ruler? Well, because I, I want to find the excuse to use these techniques. Because when you're in... Uh, when you're moving along with your art, you don't want to just keep on picking up rulers and doing all that. This is a quicker way. So now with this, you know, I could I could uh, maybe go like this, and so I, I sort of guessed. So now my thumb and my finger is right there like that. You see that? And then I go, and then I'm gonna remember where I was and go like that, and then like that. And that's pretty darn accurate. You see that? I go like there, and now I'm going to mark it. Like that. And then I'm going to double check it here. Mark it like that. And if I don't like it, I'm not going to accept it. And like that. That's pretty accurate. And so, what I'm going to do is carry this information over to the right. Like this. See that? Come over here. And I hope that I'm not in the way, like I usually am. And I do apologize, trying to... That's a little bit... Uh, I think that if I go like this a little bit, just a little hair down further, just a little, 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 little bit, I think we're okay. And, you know, I don't... I mean, you can if you have to but I, I recommend again try to do things freehand so I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna do what's called feathering technique you go like this and I go like that and I go back to where it starts and go further down like that it's a little bit off so let's go like this so feathering is where you're you're making this kind of a mark it would have been difficult to go straight down you see you might be able to get away with it Let's see if I can. So you go like this straight down, and then you can try that. That's a little bit different from feathering. And that, that kind of works pretty good. Like that. And then here, see, just gently get that in there like that. It looks crooked, but I think it's because of the angle of the camera or something. So, uh, and I, I don't know, I, I can't always get it perfect. But I assure you that the, this is pretty darn good. You see that? And so now what's really nice is um, <clears throat> the still life is before us. Well, you can't see it. I'll show it to you in a second. And I also have my composition here. Now... This, this is to help me create a nice, fortunate composition. It's not going to help me with anything else. And it might help me with a little bit of the idea of the negative and positive space and also the, the breaking up of this whole area into three values, white, black, and gray. But that's about it. The rest is going to be taken from the still life. Immediately we know what to do with the Charles Bard method. I'm going to come in with the diagonals. And this is sort of like a cheat sheet for us just to get in there. So am I going to make the first mark for the nest here? Absolutely not. So right here, the middle square on the left, just like the middle square here on the left. Now this is where I think you should try and eyeball it. From here, we'll get over here. The essential marks that we need. Now these are very tentative at best. So you can tell that that's halfway. And this 
is not. And it should go down there. I sometimes feel like I have to rush because I have to get these videos online, but then I, I compromise the integrity of the, of the work, and so I, you don't want to do that. Let's just see what we can do. And as you can see, I prepared my paper. I, I taped the top and just the bottom with the blue painter's tape, and I left the sides untaped to give us that vignette effect that I'm, that I'm really getting into. And um, charged up the paper with the vine charcoal, like so, and used a paintbrush here to do that with it. And then I started to apply the marks, the lines, with my vine charcoal. So now we are all caught up. I didn't really get into why I picked this comp composition and maybe we could talk about it before we get into it. I don't know if I want to flip this around or anything but because these, these are uh, sideways and these are right side up. Actually they're all pretty neat and just to cut to the chase because I can't say that this is a better composition than say this one. This becomes a personal choice. I'm really into the dark background and how it creeps into the foreground from where the marble is. Now I don't think I'm going to be able to get too much of that here, but at least I'm going to get the dark background behind the foreground. I just like that that um, that sense of depth using that, that kind of uh, negative space. So that that's pretty much my my argument, and and so you and you could like uh, you know bring me to task because this is in the middle. Oh no! And I said, don't have this, the focal point in the middle. Well, remember the exception that we've talked about in the past. Like there are exceptions. I would think that this is an exception. Now the reason why is because sure something like that is in the middle, but look what is happening around it you see that and I, I had and I think I had mentioned that in the previous video so let's continue where we left off I'm really just trying to pay attention now to a series of diagonal lines. Well, now I'm going to play with the pair over here. So th th this whole method works great. And again, it's kind of like it's easier to draw from a drawing than it is to draw from real life. So I'm I'm able to give myself that that uh, caveat. Thing is, though, you really have to put some effort into your composition. If this is very just if this is very random and sloppy, then it's gonna it ain't gonna serve well, so you know that's why we have a we had a program to follow. And we really did uh, what I would think is a decent job in figuring out these these sketches. So this whole area is grapes. See, I'm I'm, I'm able to get the angle more readily from here to here and I guarantee it's the same as over there because I was really trying to pay attention and when you're not sure you're drawing from this to here you can also look over there to your still life be truthful to yourself when you're getting this there's a question here this is kind of a problem here like do I want this to cross over or to touch there's a thing called visual tension. And that's where um, two things in a composition butt up against each other in an unfortunate area, like right here. The, the point of this just touches here, and that draws your attention there. So that's considered a classical no-no. So, But the thing is, I see it all the time, and so I, I might be able to get away with that. Or, if we want, we can do something like this. There, there is some freedom that we have. We can say the book has to go like this. And it's tucked away in here like that. And so it doesn't touch. We'll get back to that later. The idea is that I'm not going to get bogged down with one area, per se. I'm going to kind of 
work around the hole and then start moving into the detailed areas later. And yes, I can look at my still life and correct what might not be working. And I have to admit, I think somebody moved my still life when I wasn't looking. <laughs> Those grapes are kind of uh, messing with me. Because uh, in the still life, it goes like like this. The grapes come over here. So we'll, we'll deal with that a little bit later, okay? <clears throat> Let's move on up over here. So we have a book. At the beginning of the nest is somewhere around here. And like that. Now the pair isn't right. Why isn't the pair right? And I'm gonna just show you right here. The pair goes up here like that. You see that? And then the stem is like that. And the other part of the pair butts up against there like that. That's a huge mistake right on my part. But you see how this technique helps me zero in on the correct drawing. So let's, uh, of that pair, let's get this in here. So I'm gonna get the direct, I'm gonna get the correct drawing of this guy right in here, something like that. And I'm not even racing the old one right now. You, that way you can just, come, you can kind of see. You know, it's kind of cool to sometimes leave your undermarks. That's like an, an undermark and this mark is on top of it. Just leave it alone and then go back to it later. It's kind of cool to see how the process is <clears throat> and you know you get rid of it when it starts to annoy you or confuse you but you might it, it might help uh, the uh, the artistic flow later let's just kind of leave it alone and just kind of like move on this part of the nest goes over here this part of the nest is down here it, it gets like like we, we we have to answer the question how do we even start Right, we had something in front of us, how do we even start? So the stuff that I've been showing you from, like say, drawing the pear to the bird's nest to the grapes, and then looking at how to format your stuff and using the viewfinder and all that, I think you can get a nice idea about, you know, what to do when you're at this stage. Uh, let's see, the nest is, remember how we talked about maybe applying this boxing in or enveloping technique. So I make a rectangle. And you see how I'm not even measuring from the original the proportion of things to other things. I'm just going with this. And I'm telling you, you know, I want to give you what you need to free yourself up. But the thing is, you got to practice what I'm putting up, to, putting up on YouTube exactly to get to this point. You know, I've seen some efforts, and I'm like, I know you can do better. I'm, I have to come out there and say, you can, you can do this. You have to go back. Now, the thing is, if somebody's drawing, like, say, one cone, one sphere, one cube, and one cylinder, and they're not up to snuff, well, you got to do it again. See, the thing is, you know what to look for when you're looking at a ball, you, you know, or a sphere. You know what you're looking for when you're looking at a cube. You know what it is. You, and, and so that goes with the same idea about can you draw a circle freehand. You know when it's wrong, right? A circle, you know a circle from a circle that's kind of like trying to be a circle, but it's not. These are the things that we're talking about where you know what it is. It's in front of you. You've got to get it um, <clears throat> pinned down the paper. That's why still life is pretty good because you, you know what you're trying to do because it's in front of you. The answer to the, the riddle is right in front of you. You've got to get it on here and, and try not to fake it. Don't fake it till you make it. Practice, practice. So sometimes you gotta do and redo. And then you be able to do stuff like that where you just kind of freehand that stuff in and you just go back. And, and you've seen how even someone as experienced as me have to correct mistakes. Thing is, I'm able to spot them. And that's what we wanna do. We wanna spot things and then correct them. So and another thing is to stand back five, five feet, kind of like what I'm doing now. And just look at everything scope out everything and go back in to work. This this here, you see that? Follow that down in here. See it kind of goes in here like that, crosses over the shell, and it comes down here to this bottom middle square, like that, and it, and it hits the pair. Now, and it looks like this negative space, you see that, it's that? It looks like in my drawing it's bigger than what it should be. See that triangle? I make a triangle like that. That triangle goes here like that. Well, it looks like it's pretty close, but it just looks like it was bigger than what I thought. So you see how you look at these. Now look at this right here. Look at this. 
shape. It goes like that, 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 that. So you see that shape? See that? Make sure they correspond. Make sure they match up. Now remember the whole thing is it has to be within the same proper proportions as the original. So we went over this, right? So this is the same as that and we, we've determined that this is the same as this. This is just bigger. You see how using this approach will help you lock in. Now it's so important because like some of us will just like forget all this and just say I'm going to start drawing the still life you know cold turkey. So you, you go and you put detail in the pear and you realize you have to move the pear over it's too small. So you have to erase and get bigger and then if you're using graphite regular pencils you try to do a drawing this big it's it's a it's a it's a frustrating mess and so that's why the things that I've showed you in my last few videos it, it, it leads up to this. You see what I mean? Now this brings in a whole nother thing, like as I'm doing these diagonals, I'm kind of moving really rapid. That's called gesture drawing. There's something called gesture drawing we haven't talked about yet. Yeah, I think that this, this should be brought down like that. Or so you couldn't really do that with graphite. You know how I'm doing this? I'm plotting things out. We're working on a game plan here. That's why charcoal is really good for the whole idea about coming up with your vision. So I'm just locking this down using using my buddy over here. And then what's going to happen is I'm going to move over to getting all my information from the still life. Kind of start that now. I can come over here and start that right now. So now this can't really help me that much anymore. I can kind of glance over here while I'm looking over here. I can kind of double check it here. But the rest, I might as well just get it from the source. Really nice action going on with this straw or this blade of grass. It kind of just curves around like that. And it, and it comes in like that. It comes down also as well. It points at the pair like that. Sometimes we get tempted to do one square at a time. You might take that with a grain of salt. Just kind of match it up. Make sure it's all you know working out here and connection to the source and your drawing. Uh, let's see, it might be a little bit off. There we go. Step back. You can almost treat the nest and the seashell as one object. You know, what if the seashell is just growing out of the nest? You know, it's an appendage of the nest, so it's one thing. You can always play little games like that with yourself. I mean, we obviously know, we obviously know that they're two different things, but the idea is, you know, don't panic, just really just try to put something together based on what we're talking about. I know you can do it. So you kind of know what I'm doing without me even saying, you know, when I go like this, and you see me going like this, you know, you know what I'm doing, so I might not even have to mention it. This might be a little bit more of a rapid process. The drawing might be a little bit more animated when it's done. I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see. But, I, you know, I want to give you something to to use. And for those who want to get into more serious matters like drawing the figure from life, what that one doing here is very important. They don't always use the viewfinder and they divide up the picture plane to nine squares every time they draw the figure from life. When you have the figure sitting on a chair or standing there from life, I don't see a lot of us using this in the classroom. This winds up being a tool for what do you do with the drawings that you create. Now you want to make a statement. You want to create a finished paint of painting or something. Now you have to compose and arrange. Well, then this, this might come into play, if anything. Or if you wanted to draw a section of the model and make a compositional thing right there, you might want to use this. But the part that's really important is this, this whole kind of uh, action going on. And it does tie in with what's called gesture drawing. Let's get in here. Uh, seashell does not look like a box, so we're gonna we're gonna fix that up right now. See that? 
And it's kind of cool because this kind of echoes the shape of this. You're going to find something called repetition. Repetition is an element of design. And so here we have repetition going on right here and here. And a little bit over here too. This is one grape. Notice how I made it into a type of rectangle. There's like three grapes here. There's Oh, there's actually two grapes. There's one grape here, and then there's one behind it. So I'm going to go like this to show you. One, two grapes, and then here's the third one. So there's three grapes here. Two grapes here. And I am paying attention to how many grapes there are. I might not say out loud, but I am really just kind of zeroing on that, that whole thing. And it gets really tricky, people. Drawing grapes. We talked about it. We did it. Now you're pretty glad you done it with me, right? To get at this stage, you might want to do a separate practice drawing of grapes per se, which is a great idea. Let's say you, let's say you want to sell your work or do something serious with it, and so it calls for still lifes, and so you might want to get a couple of these objects you want to do. And you, since you've never painted a pair, paint a pair or draw a pair. You haven't drawn a bird's nest, draw the bird's nest. Now you put it all together and you make your composition of the pair and the bird's nest and the grapes and all that. So and that can go for anything. Right here there's a shape there and it kind of corresponds with that shape there. It's a little bit different I, I admit. I admit. And we're not going to fret about it. We're just going to go to the source now. I wonder if I had moved that the day before, or somebody did. I think a gremlin came here and moved my still life when I wasn't looking. But we pretty much have the composition. You see how it's working. I'm just looking at the grapes. Instead of working in this area right now, I'm trying to find the edge of the grapes. I'm trying to figure out what this should look like. And I don't know. I think I got it right. The nest is here, and it goes like that. Now the other thing that's going on here is the leaf. That's a leaf. That's the first grape that shows up. Little guy from behind. The next grape for here. And this is part of a grape. Pops up here like that. Got to correct myself a little bit as I go. See that? <clears throat> now we'll indicate this. This is a grape like that. And there's another grape here. See how the outside starts to bring me in, into the inside. I didn't plan that, but you see it's kind of neat. It just kind of evolved into that. See that? It all links up over here. See that? I recommend like using like you draw either rectangles for your grapes or you start using like pentagonal shapes, you know, or you know, like that, like that pentagonal shape. That's a pentagon right there, five sided. You know, I I really think that that helps you put this stuff together. It, I don't know how much I can stress that. When I when I found that on my own, I was like, oh dang, you know, this is pretty powerful, you know. So I'm actually playing around with my brush over here, doing some subtraction, just a little bit, flirting around with the idea, cleaning up a little bit here. Let's see what we can do with this over here. The grapes. You see how I'm blocking in the grapes. So I. I want to go back in there with the grapes. Checking off these forms here. Notice I'm using all diagonal lines. 
there's really there's what I call the illusion of curves. There's no curves yet for where that takes me. So I'm looking for these uh, shapes. Now here, there's two more grapes. So I first divide it up like this, using rectangular type thing. And you could draw right on top of each other. See that? See that? Like ice cubes. Because ice cubes are, you know, in the cartoon world, completely transparent, right? So, uh, like, you think of them as glass cubes, they're considered transparent, right? Like, watch this, I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna draw this cube as a grape here. Watch this. And then there's another grape that goes right on top of it like that. And I'm really happy to find this technique, it really, I used to just draw like this, and then, oh, I don't like it, and I just keep redoing that. And that's, that's not the way to do it, folks. I really am going to ask you not to try that. I, I, I suggest you try this right here. Ta-da, there's another grape behind here, like that. And with the vine charcoal, this works. If you're using pen and ink or, well, if you're using graphite, you couldn't do this. And if you're doing pen and ink, you, you can't do this and then cover it up. You see, th this is a very specific technique. And that's why I encourage you to, to have the right materials to, to play with this. So you see how I did that area? Now let's go in there and purchase these grapes. Let's get, let's, now watch this, how it works. Very important. Now I think, okay, right here, there's something here that, what the heck is that? What is that? Nothing, right? There's nothing there. Well, we got to put something there. First of all, this grape here is... I, I'm looking at it right now, and it's the, there's like three grapes like this. But this one here is a little bit exaggerated. Now, let me tell you, like, I think some of the greatest art exaggerates reality. You'll see that in Peter Paul Rubens' paintings. And uh, among many others. And so what I'm saying is I might have gotten away with that because it kind of emphasizes depth because this grape is overlapping this grape, which is overlapping this grape. So it only makes sense that this would be bigger than this one and so on because of what's called perspective. But it's totally not like that. It's, 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 it's not smaller, but it's definitely not that huge. So in this case, I might tone it down just a little. And so I'm even making it more round. So that's a bit better. There's something here that is not right. Uh, again, I have I have Two rows of three. I have one, two, three, and I have one, two, three. There's something not right here. Now, this is what you have to do sometimes. Just, just um, knuckle under, man, and just retry. You know, get the angle of those three grapes. You see, I'm doing it with my brush now. Get the angle. I actually got the angle right. And then I'm going to try this. I'm going to try a different thing here. Because I... I didn't get it. I'm going to treat those three grapes 
as a singular entity. And we're going to get it. I guarantee we're going to get it. See that? Now, the thing is, it's really falling in place because underneath that, I make this square because that's going to represent another grape that's underneath these, what are going to be three grapes. So now I'm just going to go like this. Filling it in. Now this grape overlaps this grape. And I'm really paying attention to these individual puppies. Very tricky. Now this grape here overlaps like that. And this one tucks from underneath. Like so, this is a little bit confusing there. I don't know what I, I don't know what this is right here. Let me double check. There's okay. There's three more grapes that go like that. You might find something where you can actually find three grapes at a time and lock them down. So you, you look at three grapes and junk, three grapes, junk, three grapes, junk. You know, that might be, like if you, you find something that seems to work for you, you might, you might, you might be onto something, you know. For me, it's just a number three. I can get into three later. I'm really interested in the number three. Okay. Maybe I'll do a demo on an in-depth composition, because this is the beginning of composition. Um, but three shows up a lot, and... I hope hopefully I can bring incorporate the number three in, in this. Uh, right now you can say, well, sir, there is three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. There's three sets of three. Yeah, that's kind of cool, right? So anyways, um, let's just move on here. Uh, okay. Um, so those three grapes are there. Okay, that's good. And then there's, um, there's two grapes here. There's one here like this. And then there's this other one here like that. Okay, that's good. That's good. Uh, there's a stem. Ooh, wait. Something is not right. Oh, come on, Serge. I have two grapes. Three. Oh, there, guess what? There's another three grapes. Right here. This is the... This, the, this, this is the problem. There's a grape here like that. See how I'm locking it in using rectangles. Ta-da! And I ruined my, um, I broke my compressed charcoal because I got all excited. So, um, so now we've got to come in here and I'm really convinced that you'll get a lot out of this technique. How I'm doing the grapes, it's very tantamount to what we're talking about. And then I can come in here like this and like that. We don't want to switch from the vine charcoal to the compressed charcoal prematurely. We have to, you know, be patient here. We'll get this. The overlapping kind of uh, enforces depth. And one of the ways of achieving depth is through what's called overlapping. Talk about that some other time. Like different ways of achieving depth. One is overlapping. One is diagonal placement. Another one is, one is called stacking. And then another one is obviously is linear perspective. These are these like four different ways of achieving depth. You know, that that's a whole lesson in, 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 on its on its own. Especially for people who are into comics and stuff like that. Yeah, this stuff helps all the time. You know, you have like figures in a in a panel, but none of them overlap. They're kind of like afraid to touch. You start overlapping things, and you know, buildings and forms. You know, then you get the sense of depth. That's way more, you know, gratifying. Uh, for an example, okay, something, okay, here, okay, ah, and then there's a stem, I'm going to express it as a simple line, get the right direction, which is not right, I got the direction wrong. See, I'm very sensitive to this, it's pointing up like that, a little bit better. And then there's a, another guy right there. So, I'm happy with those grapes right now, and so we're going to... We're gonna say okay, but now I have to I have to take this, I have to bring it down like that. Oh 
Okay. Now the book. It's a little bit off. The position of the book. I could have lied. And I, unfortunately I did draw like that. I really think that this was moved. And I'm like, ah. So uh, I have to go like this to correct the problem. See that? And then the book goes like this. So you see how Vine Charcoal gives us the freedom to do this kind of planning. This is really, I really recommend that, you know, the learner become proficient with charcoal and, and you know, and charcoal paper. I'm almost seeing that this is kind of like truncated and I think the reason why is I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like forcing these guys, uh, I think that they should go out to here. See that? So now I got a grape here. Remember we talked about creative license? Well, I'm using it a little bit here. And the trick is, you're not gonna notice a problem. Here you will, because it's a, it's a ice cube. And I'm still, I'm looking at this, but I had to reposition something. And so you go and look and see if you can find it. Um, boy. Yeah, I, I'm gonna. Okay, that no longer what I thought that was. That's going to be here. It looks like almost like a dumbbell, doesn't it? Because <laughs> there's a, there's a, see the way grapes work is, is, is like this. You kind of have like a, a stem and you have all these individual ones sticking out like that. And then you have the grapes on the end of these little stems. See, that's what's happening with that. But you don't see, you don't always see the network of stems onto which these grapes attach. Grapes and plants, plants are really fascinating, you know. You know, nature is your best teacher. You draw from nature, you know. There's so many things to, to talk about with that. Like, what if you got into drawing insects? That'd be freaking cool. I still want to do like a series of paintings of these insects. So I'm really looking at the key areas. And I fixed, I fixed certain things that I don't think was right. And I also think that this can go down further like that. Let's get that little grape out of there. <laughs> now, there's all sorts of, you know, grass going like that. And, you know, I'm not going to do that. But what I am going to do is this. Watch this. I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to get rid of this. And I'm just going to focus on a single blade, that just blade of grass that really is prominent. And I'm going to focus on this one here that I started with the subtraction technique. And I'm going to focus on that. So now I'm beginning to buy in to main forms. And I am spending more time with the vine charcoal because I've had a couple of uh, setbacks that I didn't at first notice until too late almost. But since I'm using vine charcoal, it's not too late. So I just draw, I made this mark here, but now I'm correcting it by drawing right here. See, I just draw over the previous marks. I recommend you do the same thing. Don't keep erasing and then drawing. No, just draw, just keep drawing and overlap. Layer your information. And then you can go back and do this. Watch this. So I can get rid of this, get rid of that uh, boxed in shape, we don't need that. Got rid of the box and I kept the shape. Now there, there is some cool stuff going on here. I'm just going to indicate it gently like that. That's it. There's a lot of other stuff going on but Unless it's a prominent shape, let's not worry about it. This actually is a dark shape. Sometimes you gotta hit with some values. You know, I'm, I'm gonna now I'm gonna draw some of the mass using my binding charcoal to help me figure this stuff out. Gotta figure this puppy out. Let's lock it down. Let's get it in gear. Let's get it to, into gear and. See what we can come up with here. See that? That's the shadow of the of the nest. 
There's a shadow here. There's individual pieces of grass right here, like one going like that, and then another one going like that, another one going like that. You know, I don't know if I want to keep that there, but like, you know, um, we don't have to worry about that now. As long as I don't hit it with compressed charcoal and then have to erase, if I want to put those there, I might, I might not leave them there. Because some, there's a thing called editing, and editing is very important. It's what you take out of the finished product, right? And then, and if you studied uh, film, you learn that uh, editing is like an art form, like the way John Cassavetes, or the way. Uh, or like maybe the way even Orson Welles, you know, uh, film, it's, it's what he, how he edited his, his, um, his movie that makes it such a great statement in film. Well, artists can do that too. It's what you leave out. And writers do it. It's what they leave out. And, and so when I draw, maybe there's certain things I should leave out. And, and so that's... Yeah, that's the whole. That's a whole other thing on its own, right there. Is editing. So I was able to, you know, and it's still kind of rocky, clunky, you know. Uh, that might be someone's. You might. Your style might be. You know that, where it's just bold and gestural, and so on and so on. But we're gonna we're gonna bring this down into the classical sense in a minute. We're we're getting there, gang. This is a compressed charcoal, and it is da, 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 a four B, which is kind of soft, but I might be able to get away with it. It doesn't seem to feel wrong. See that? The reason the side of, here's the tip. I'm, I'm going into the side and doing these marks. And I'm conscious about it. I've, after I did the vine charcoal of the grapes and all this stuff, now I'm going with the compressed charcoal from here down. I think that's kind of like what I've, ventured into and I kind of like it. It works pretty good. So you see how we're putting this together, eh? So I got, I got like this part of the nest and this part I had a little bit of a problem and then the book. And I'm not even shading the shadows yet. I'm working on the, the sh you know, hacking in the forms, hacking in the forms. I kind of like how it looks a little bit bold. A little sketchy. I think it's pretty cool. Well, my my arms. Well, thank God I'm right-handed because it's easier for you to see what I'm doing. So I'll stop that ambidextrous nonsense here. Right? I'm quasi ambidextrous. I'm not 100 percent. Again, I have to draw. Like, don't draw like this. Like, this is what you shouldn't be doing. I'm doing that because you have to see what I'm doing. You should probably, this is how you should be drawing. You're, you you're actually should be in front of your work. And you should be like, like that. Like that. Like this. Like this. That's how you should do it. Another way is like this. If you don't have to rest your hand on anything, you use your whole arm to draw like so. You see that? At first, it's not going to feel right. But then you're going to begin to really be grateful that, wow, I'm learning some new ways of drawing, handling my materials. Um, I'm not holding my, my drawing utensil like I'm writing my name. When you start drawing on your own, me too, you, you hold your pencil in it like this, like you're writing your name for the whole thing. But then you start learning how to handle different kinds of tools. Like I recommend somebody who's drawn, like I've had people who draw like dynamite, but they've never used a a uh, charcoal stick. They've only used sharpened pencils. Get into using this as well as um, this.
Now I think that I'm ready to do this. I think it's time. I want you to see it. Well, you didn't get to see the top. So I'll, I'll adjust the camera in a minute. 